Human beings have always been curious about the basic functions of the mind and the body. In the classical age of ancient Greece and Rome, the human body was the inspiration for great works of art and sculpture. Some of them can be found in museums around the world, like here at Glupte Tekel in Copenhagen. The same age of antiquity also gave birth to some of the earliest known medical scientists. Among them, and perhaps the most famous, Hippocrates, known as the father of medicine. And although the world of medical science has seen numerous discoveries and breakthroughs since this era, one particular area, the brain and how it functions, remains largely a mystery. But each year we learn more about the brain and the nervous system, thanks to the scientists and researchers who devote their lives to its study. And that's why we're here today, to celebrate some of the brilliant minds of the neuroscience community and to honor them with one of the most prestigious scientific awards in the world, the Brain Prize. Hi, Lena. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm very well. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Different venue this year, but yes. the same reason we're meeting again yes. is to celebrate the Brain Prize this year in 2023 yeah. here at Glupte Tekel in mm -hmm. Copenhagen, surrounded by incredible statues of antiquity. It's so. fantastic and light and beautiful. I think it fits in quite well with the Brain Prize. Chance to talk a little bit about what the Brain Prize is really all about. Can you start by telling about the foundation and the work it does? Sure. We spent basically all of our days investing in our commercial assets. And we do that so that we can invest that money in public research. And in that public research, we have a very sharp focus on the brain. And how does the Brain Prize and the awarding of the Brain Prize fit into that broader mandate? We invest, of course, in what we believe are the best researchers and the best research projects. But every once in a while, it's great just to stop and then celebrate and acknowledge some of those researchers and neuroscientists who have already done something that's proved to be really groundbreaking for us, our understanding of the brain. And that's really what the Brain Prize is about. It is now a global prize, yes. which means that any neuroscientist throughout the world can be nominated for the prize. So it fits in quite well, I think, with the rest of what we do. It's grown in a good direction. Yeah. And when you look at the implications for society writ large, how important is, is the continued research into brain and neurological disorders for us generally? It's hugely important. During their lifetime, one in five Danes end up with some type of brain disorder. If you look at the cost to society, just in Denmark, a relatively small country, it's uh, close to 15 billion euro per year. If you multiply that up and think about it on a global scale, it's mind-boggling. And that's before you start taking into consideration the relatives, the patients, or the human suffering that brain disorders bring about. So yes, I do think that it is a huge societal problem. If the winners of the Brain Prize can inspire young people, talented researchers, to work within the field of, of brain research, then we will gradually get closer and closer to understanding and at the same time, it gives us an opportunity when we give out the Brain Prize to raise the awareness of these diseases. Well, it really isn't long now till we'll find out who are the 2023 winners of the Brain Prize. That's right. I can't wait to find out. But first things first, I'm taking this short walk from Gloop de Tekel to the Villa Copenhagen, where the award ceremony to honor the Brain Prize winners will actually take place later this year. The ceremony is a gala affair, attended by the winners, their families and their colleagues. In all, the celebration will involve up to 400 guests, including the Danish Minister of Science and Education and His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, who will present the Brain Prize to this year's recipients. I'm here today to meet the director of the Brain Prize and the chair of the selection committee so they can explain how the winners are chosen. Well, on this long journey, Martin, from, from starting out with some nominees to getting to where we'll be, where do you start and how do you get us to this point? Well, I mean, the whole process starts in May, which is when the nomination window opens, and then it closes again in September. The selection committee um, then reads all the nominations, and then they met in October and had the agonizing task of drawing up a shortlist. 
And then that shortlist is sent out for peer review to experts in the field. And the selection committee meets again at the beginning of January. And then they have the really difficult job of deciding who this year's winners are. So yeah, the work of the Brain Prize continues year round pretty much. Richard, when we, we talk about neuroscience, it's an incredibly broad view. How, how do you go about it? Well, fundamentally, it comes down to one thing, which is the merit of the science. We have to think about impact um, and importance. Has an amazing discovery been made, which, which everybody recognizes is, is groundbreaking? And have they also started to yield new discoveries? Has it had an impact within other fields of neuroscience? Has it had impact on potential therapeutics uh, or in other ways that might be helping the various diseases of the brain. So those are the two kind of facets of merit that we're thinking about. Richard, I can't ask you to give too much away, but can you tell us a little bit about this year's winners? This year, the winning team, so to speak, is the three scientists, two women and, and one man. And they work in the United States and in Germany and in Britain. And as a group, they've made fundamental discoveries about how connections are formed as, as the brain develops very early in life, uh, and then how in the adult brain there is the possibility of having all the molecular machinery that these brain cells need to do their job and how they get to be in the right place at the right time. So it's an exciting story. Thank you both very much for taking the time to lift the veil a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to hearing who the winners are very soon. The winners of the 2023 Brain Prize have been chosen. We don't know who they are yet, but we're going to find out very soon. So the three winners are Michael Greenberg from Harvard University, Erin Schumann, who works at a Max Planck Institute in Frankfurt in Germany, and uh, Christine Holt from the University of Cambridge. Speaking. Oh, hi, Christine. I'm just calling to let you know that the Brain Prize Selection Committee, that they selected you as one of this year's recipients of the Brain Prize. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So you're... Martin, my goodness. Hi, this is Erin. Hi, Erin. It's Martin Meyer speaking from the Lundbeck Foundation. Hi, Martin. So I'm... I'm phoning with what I hope will be good news. Um, so the Brain Prize Selection Committee, they selected you as one of this year's recipients of the Brain Prize. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hi, could I speak to Michael Greenberg, please? This is he. How Hi. can I help? Um, so I'm just phoning to let you know that the Brain Prize Selection Committee, they've selected you as one of this year's recipients of the Brain Prize. Oh, wow. Yes. That's exciting. <laughs> It made my day, it actually made probably my year. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. I'm very, I'm very happy that you're happy. Christine Holt is a developmental neurobiologist. She's always been fascinated by how from the earliest stages the brain grows and makes the right connections. And she's used a number of different systems to study this process. One she's used a lot is, is how the axons of the retinal ganglion cells, which are responding to light to enable us to see, find their way into the brain. And one of her absolutely key discoveries was that this process is not controlled exclusively by the cell body, but messenger RNAs are sent out to these growth codes that are finding their way. And they there make proteins which interact with guidance cues that are being sensed outside uh, the growth cones and help to guide either to go straight on or to turn right. So that local protein synthesis is absolutely fundamental uh, for making these connections um, correctly. The award ceremony is on the 6th of June in Copenhagen and that's where you, Erin and Michael will get your medals from the Crown Prince of Denmark. Wonderful. And so I'm expected to be in Copenhagen on the 6th. Th that would be very much appreciated. I don't think I have anything more important to do on this day. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Greenberg's research has addressed the fascinating question of how nature, in the form of the expression of genes, and nurture, in the form of the environment and our reaction to the environment, interact and cooperate for proper brain function. And what he's been able to do 
by looking at so-called activity-dependent gene transcription is get down to the study of this process at the deep molecular and cellular and circuit level. By studying it at that level, he's been able to identify specific, what's called immediate early genes, and he's been able to see exactly what further steps happen after their expression. And that detail matters because once you have that, you're in a position to spot where things might go wrong and he's now beginning to see dysregulation of some of these processes. In certain kinds of disorders, notably neurodevelopmental disorders, such as autism spectrum disorders. So he's opening up potential new areas which, which could have massive therapeutic significance. That's so, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I can't find the words right now. I'm so honored. <laughs> That's such a, really fabulous. Erin Schumann's piece of the puzzle has to do with the transport of mRNAs out from the cell body to the sites where they're needed, which are the synaptic connections which form between one brain cell and another, the synapses. They are then locally translated uh, to produce the wide range of proteins that are needed for the different functions uh, within the synapse, the so-called proteome that's there. The remarkable feature about this discovery is that this complex process of, of translation to create proteins is happening in these incredibly small compartments, the synapses uh, of brain cells. And the process involved the development of a range of, of different technologies and some are now being taken up by other labs around the world. I think it's a major contribution uh, to the field. I think that all that remains to be said on behalf of the Lundbeck Foundation and the Brain Prize Selection Committee, congratulations, it's uh, thoroughly well deserved. <laughs> thank you very much, I'm really at a loss for words. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you. Have a wonderful news. It was a pleasure to deliver it. So now one, now two, but three very happy winners. Indeed, done. <laughs> Job well done, sir. Excellent. When I reflect on the contributions they've made, one can only say that theirs is a truly beautiful story of discovery, absolutely fundamental neuroscience and discoveries that are already showing great promise for helping us understand um, various diseases, including in particular neurodevelopmental disorders. Dear Erin, Christine and Michael, on behalf of the Lundbeck Foundation, I want to congratulate you on being the 2023 winners of the Brain Prize. And I want to thank you for all your hard work and your dedication to solving some of the mysteries of the brain. Thank you. I'm absolutely thrilled to hear the news that Christine Holt, Aaron Schumann, and I have the great honor to be awarded the Brain Prize for 2023. I'm really proud to share the prize with Mike Greenberg, whose work I've admired and been influenced by for decades, and also to share the prize with my dear friend, Christine Holt. It's been an exciting journey of discovery that may eventually lead to advances in therapies for neurodegenerative disease and neural repair. Our successes over the years are without question due to the hard work and creativity of my many laboratory colleagues including fantastic students, postdoctoral fellows, and research assistants. The prize is an incredible recognition of the work that we've been doing over the last 40 years. I'm very grateful to the Lundbeck Foundation for their extremely generous support of neuroscience research and for this great recognition of our efforts and our discoveries. Thank you. <laughs>